So today's video is covering the Defense Aeronautical Information Portal, also known as DAPE. For you Air Force guys out there, the 11202 Vault 3 directs us to use DAPE as our primary source of obtaining NOTAM information. For airfields that are not covered by DAPE, a plain language notice in red font will be displayed advising the user of that fact. In that case, you need to contact the airfield manager or associated flight service station directly to obtain your NOTAM information. Alright, so let's take a look at the DAPE website. I have the best results using Microsoft Edge. So from here, I'm going to type in DAPE. And the first result that I've always seen gets me dape.jcs.mil. Unfortunately, you can't type that into the search bar because a couple issues, but this is what you're looking for on the website. All right, so let's take a look at the first and most powerful function of the DAPE system. So let's say we're doing a hypothetical cross country. We're going from Vance Air Force Base all the way to Abilene using the Victor 77 Rudy. So my departure airfield is gonna be Vance, which is Kilo Echo November Delta. My destination is going to be Abilene, Kilo Alpha Bravo, India. My alternate, let's just say it's Amarillo, Kilo Alpha Mike Alpha, just for fun. And our route of flight is going to be the Pioneer Vortec, the Victor 77 routing, to the Abilene Vortec, and then direct to Abilene after that. This part right here is probably the most important part of DAPE that I think is not widely recognized. So we can search a radius off the center line of our route of flight. I recommend if you're in a T6, we use 50 nautical miles because using half the ME plus key math, half of 50 nautical miles is 25,000 feet plus a high key of let's say 5,000 feet, which should cover pretty much most of the US that we're gonna be flying in anyways. That gets me an altitude of about 30,000 feet. So anywhere that I'm cruising in a T6, 50 nautical miles is the widest possible range, which I can get to from gliding distance. I can filter by runway length, so I'm going to look for any 4,000 foot long strip of pavement that's at least 75 feet wide, and I can filter by DOD or civilian only airfields. I'm going to do DO, um, all, actually, and then I'm going to select view notams. All right, so this is what you should get once you input all of that data. One thing to note, I did make a mistake. When we search by 4,000 feet, that is with no comma or else you'll get an error. So no comma on the runway length. So basically, yeah, it got us from Vance to Abilene with an alternate Amarillo using the routing that we specified. And there are 360 total nodems. So it, go, it already sorts by critically. So this basically means that the most pertinent or important NOTAMs will be at the top of each airfield. So as a generally smart aviator, I'm gonna select all the NOTAMs for my point of departure, all the NOTAMs for my point of arrival, all the NOTAMs for my alternate, and then when it comes to en route, I'm pretty much just going to very quickly scan through, and when I see these warnings, I'm just gonna make sure that it doesn't say runway closure. So runway 35 Pappies, maybe Pappies as well if it's at night or something like that. But here we go at Oak City, I'm gonna highlight that guy. Uh, looking at Tinker, runway closure, continue scrolling down. Once we get through all of that, I'm gonna go ahead and go to VIP TFRs. Always highlight your, v your TFRs. This one is for the former President Bush living in Dallas. It's been active since 2009. Good gotcha for student pilots. I'm gonna look through all the ARTCC center notams and then flight data center notams. I'm gonna highlight all of our warning notams. All right, so at this point, we should have highlighted all the notams that we wanna to bring to our final publication. I just wanna reiterate that I discriminated the way that I did amongst my nodes because that is what makes sense for my particular airframe and the type of flying that we do. You can be more or less generalized than what I was, but again, that's just how I'm doing it. That is technique only and not at all procedure. All right, so from here, 
now that I have all my notifications selected again, I'm going to click on view selected. So this is going to come up with a nice, concise group of just the notes that I had highlighted. Now I'm going to click print and it's going to come up with a nice publication for me to print out and staple. It's going to separate each page by point of departure, point of arrival, our alternates, all the notes along the real flight. If there's a graphic associated with it, so this is the runway closure for 1836 at Tinker, it'll print that out for you. And then we also have our TFRs as well as our flight data center notes as well. All right, so I think that if you can use the search by route of flight function on date, that's probably 90% of what you need in order to use this tool. But it does have a lot of other functions that could be useful based on your application. So again, we searched by route of flight and that's where we did our departure destination and route of flight. We can also search by location so we can enter a bunch of four letter identifiers for airfields separated by commas. And it'll give us all the notice for those areas. We can do an area briefing so I can type in Vance Air Force Base and then do a radius of 100 nautical miles and find every notum in that local area. We can also search by fixed radial distance or by lat longs. All in all, these three functions, the search by location, route of flight, and the area briefing, that is everything you really need to know about using the DAPE system, in my opinion. Depending on your airframe or mission, some of these other types of notums can be applicable, but most of the basic stuff that you're going to need to get through pilot training will be found in these three systems. So take some time to poke around, check out some of these things on your own. There's a ton of DOD wide information on this right hand side over here, um, as well as this DAPE training document. It's a PowerPoint on how to use DAPE and goes in a little more detail than what I think is the scope of this video. But all in all, that is pretty much everything you need to know about the DOD aeronautical information system. One last thing to note is that you can log in, create an account and what this will allow you to do is you can save pre-coordinated routes of flight or just straight up locations that you like to search if you do the same repetitive routing or if you just fly in a general local area. So I would say this would be good, especially for pilot training students that have morning formal briefs. They can just search up all the local flying airfields and then check out all the critical notums that would prevent flying for that day and then give that to their instructors to brief every morning. Otherwise, that is all I got for you. You now know everything you need to know about the Defense Aeronautical Information System, also known as DAPE. And basically one critical component of your mission planning requirements for the rest of your career. Please let me know if there's anything I missed or anything you think I should have covered. I'm gonna have to do a couple more videos on NOTAMs because uh, this started off as just a simple, what is a NOTAM video? and then grew into something much larger than I originally expected. So be on the lookout for those videos to come. Otherwise, I will see you later.